sign on the cell cycle. So basically, cell division is super important in order for life to exist, okay? Have life being able to continue is based on the cell's ability to reproduce. So for unicellular organisms, this division is actually their form of reproduction. So a protist would divide into two um, daughter cells, and that would be how it would reproduce. For multicellular eukaryotic organisms, they have, they have to, um, they have a variety of different reasons why they need to go through cell division, either um, initially for development purposes and growth, um, and later for renewal, repair, and replacement of cells. If you get a cut on your hand, your cells will go through cell division to replace um, all of those damaged cells. Just a couple of uh, vocabulary terms to start us off. Please come back and reference these if you need to throughout the program. Um, for DNA, uh, one of the important terms is the genome. So this is all the DNA in the cell. Um, chromosomes are packaged condensed DNA. So down here I have a chromosome. It is um, that typical structure that you see. And basically, the way you want to think about it is that the DNA is all wound up. Okay, so here is a replicated chromosome right here, you can see that the DNA is all coiled. See all these coils? So it's very tightly condensed. Um, when you loosen up the DNA and kind of uncondense it a little bit, it's what we call chromatin. So this is a complex of DNA and histone protein. So it's just kind of loosely condensed. So all this right here would be your chromatin. Um, a histone protein are these little blue guys. So whenever um, DNA wraps around them, it's really, it's really helpful because it keeps the DNA from getting damaged or breaking or um, anything going wrong with the DNA. So it's really important that it stays wrapped around the little histone proteins. A good way to think about it is like a spool of thread. So the DNA would be the thread and the histone protein would be the spool. That way your um, thread doesn't get all tangled, it doesn't get damaged, and it stays all in one place nicely organized. Another thing we're going to be talking about today are sister chromatids. Sister chromatids are duplicated chromosomes okay, that are joined together. And note that there are two sister chromatids. Okay, so Two chromatids make up a sister chromatid. And this is a duplicated chromosome. So this is a sister chromatid. It is one chromosome. Two chromatids, one chromosome. Okay, They're duplicated. When they separate through the process of mitosis, they will become daughter chromosomes. They would they would change from being chromatids to being chromosomes when they are fully separated. And note that the sister chromatids are connected at the centromere. Another couple other vocabulary terms: uh, mitotic spindle, okay, centri centrosome, centriole, aster, connective core, and metaphase plate. I'm going to be talking about these. So if you need to come back and look at the definitions, please do. What we're we talking about is the cell cycle today. So the cell cycle is basically the life of the cell. So it's going to go through two different parts, interphase and mitosis. Interphase is basically where the cell spends 90% of its time. Okay, it very rarely enters mitosis. Interphase can be broken down into G1, S, and G2. G1 stands for gap one. Okay. S stands for synthesis, okay, DNA synthesis, synthesis excuse me. Uh, this is when DNA is replicated, and G2, so, or GAP2. Mitosis is a very small part of a cell's life, and during uh, mitotic phase, cells are going to go through mitosis and also cytokinesis, and we'll go into that into a little more detail. But the thing that you want to keep in mind and think about with the cell cycle is that the majority of the time is spent in interphase. Okay, so um, this is basically what I just said. Okay, so let's look at mitosis a little bit more. So mitosis can be broken down into phases. This book divides it up into five phases, but I have seen um, other things talk about it in four phases. So prophase, prometaphase, so kind of halfway between prophase and metaphase, um, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Cytokinesis is going to overlap a little bit with those later stages, and that's just when the cells are going to physically divide. Mitosis is the division um, of the DNA, the separation and division of the DNA. Um, cytokinesis is actually the physical separation of the cell itself. Let's look at a couple of pictures and walk through this. 
So um, we don't see G1 and S. Remember that during S, the DNA was replicated. So during G2, the last gap phase of interphase, okay, all throughout interphase, a cell is growing. So if it's growing, it's doing all the things that cells are doing. It hits the end of G2 and it reaches a little checkpoint. We're going to be talking about these checkpoints a lot later. It hits the checkpoint and the cell is um, okay to proceed through metaphase. So just to make sure it's ready to go um, into um, the mitotic phase, the centrosomes, okay, with centrals, they have to be replicated and ready to go. All the DNA has to be replicated as well. And then um, go through gap two, pass the checkpoint, and it can enter prophase. During prophase, a couple of things happen. Uh, number one, the centrosomes are going to start to separate and go move towards the poles. You can see these um, mitotic spindles. Okay, these are made up of microtubules. You can see this aster forming. Okay, it's kind of like a good way to think about it. Kind of looks aster. I mean, star. So it's kind of it's microtubules branching out in that star-like pattern. Uh, the uh, sister um, chromatids are going to be seen here. So remember that the DNA was replicated here when it condenses. So when you take all of that chromatin that uh, replicated that was um, replicated during S phase and you start to wrap it up during prophase, those um, sister chromatids are going to be visible. Note that two sister chromatids are going to be part of one chromosome. During prometaphase, you can see that the uh, the centrosomes have traveled to opposite sides of the cell, so to the poles. Okay, those mitotic spindles are stretched out and starting to connect with all of the um, sister chromatids. Uh, they connect at the very center at the place called the connect core. Okay, connect begins with a K. Let's see the vocab list for more information. It's basically a protein complex. So those spindle fibers will connect at that protein complex, or will connect there at the very at the centromere of the sister chromatids. And I think that's pretty much. Oh, and the nuclear um, the nuclear envelope is going to be almost completely broken up at this point. Uh, also note here there are centrioles because this is an animal cell. If we were looking at a plant cell, you would not see centrioles. Okay, just centrosomes. Centrioles is going to help with the organization of the spindles. Okay, so metaphase. In metaphase, you will see the sister chromatids lining up on the metaphase plate. It's not a real thing, it's just kind of a hypothetical place, kind of like the equator on the Earth. There isn't really a line there, it's just kind of a location. So they are all lined up on that metaphase plate, ready to go. And during anaphase, the sister chromatids will separate and form daughter chromosomes. So, so a sister chromatid will separate into two daughter chromosomes. Remember that sister chromatids are made up of two chromatids. They're just kind of the same name during this point. And then um, once they are separated, they'll start moving and being pulled by those mitotic spindles to the opposite sides of the cell. When they start getting very close um, and they start reaching almost to the point where the centrosomes are, they are going to start um, loosening up a little bit, so into that chromatin form. They're not going to be in uh, chromosome, they're not gonna be in that chromosome tightly packed form of DNA anymore. And this nucleolus and uh, nuclear envelope are going to reform. Uh, cytokinesis will take place where the cells will pinch off and form two genetically identical cells. Remember, the purpose of mitosis is to form two genetically identical cells. So we're not changing the DNA, we just want to make two cells. Plants and animals differ a little bit in how cytokinesis takes place. In animals, um, we call it cleavage. Uh, at the, so this little... Um, this little area right here is what we call the cleavage furrow. Basically, the cells just, um, the cell membrane is going to contract and they're going to pinch off into two cells. In a plant cell, a cell plate will form 
is right in between the two cells. So this is the cell plate will give rise to the new cell wall in separating the two daughter cells. Okay. So bacteria are a little bit different. What I just walked you through was how eukaryotic cells divide. Remember that eukaryotic cells have that nucleus that they need to account for. So this, there's it's quite a bit more complicated. In uh, bacteria, binary fission is going to take place. This is the form, their form of reproduction, cell division, kind of the same thing. So in E. coli, for instance, they have a single chromosome and um, a lot less DNA to work with, and they, that needs to first be replicated. Then um, the cells are going to elongate, making sure that um, the chromosomes make it to opposite sides of the cell, and then the plasma membrane will pinch off and divide into two cells. Let me show you how this works. You can see in step one, the chromosome replication is going to be is going to begin. Okay, so here's my my bacteria E. coli cell, cell wall, cell membrane. Here's all the DNA. Uh, this very center of the cell is what we call the nucleoid region. So there's no nucleus here, and um, there's an area called the origin of replication. So this is where the DNA is going to start replicating. Those origins will find their way to opposite sides of the cell. And eventually when all of the DNA has been replicated in that single chromosome, the cells will pinch off and they will form two genetically identical daughter cells. And this can take place very rapidly because a bacteria are quite simple organisms. So some bacteria can replicate as fast as once every 20 minutes. Okay, um, so that's binary fission and eukaryotic cell mitosis. Uh, to complete your lesson for today, you need to watch the mitosis video on Haiku. It's called it's a Bioflix mitosis video. Please bring any questions with you to class, and we are going to briefly review this topic and go through and talk about cancer and cell cycle regulation on in the next time we meet. Have a great night, girls.